Yes, welcome. This is F Rap Critic. I'm your boy Malik16. And no, ain't no disrespect to myself, so it ain't no disrespect to my game. Uh, I'm honored to have the legend here. I'm gonna let him introduce himself or reintroduce himself. Yeah, man, for the world that know and for the world that don't know, Mr. How you do that there himself, man. Mr. I smoke, I drink, um, don't bleed the dawn, you know what I mean? Call the young fam, concentration camp, you know what I'm saying? No limit for all the records, man. All the gate yeah. now, you know, look. Yeah, man. Like I said, honor and privilege to have the OG here. So now I'm gonna ask you some real MC questions. This is where we go over category two, the rap performance on the album. Um, and the first dimension of that is going to be personality. On a scale from one to five, what would you give yourself for how much personality and charisma you showed on this album? Now, uh, try to be as critical and honest as possible, because I heard you mention earlier that cats had pulled your coat, you know, that Daz told you that you was just starting. And I saw in all your later albums, you definitely got to show more vibrance and, and energy. So what would you say on a personality scale on this album from one to five. You know, I have to beat myself up over the years. I still have to come back to that five based on this many years later. I'm not saying it because it's me, but when I listen now, <clears throat> that's over 20 something years ago. So lyrically, my energy is nothing that I substitute on that. You see what I'm saying? I hear again on my worst critic. So when I listen back at the time, you gonna always think, hey man, whoop, whoop, whoop. And uh, when me and Dad's talk, it was really, Dad's came down to Baton Rouge to record with me for the My Own Rock. So that's when he was saying that. It was after the fact of balls of my work. So after that, and that reaching the plateau, it got the attention of those type of guys. Snoop, some of your best favorite, anybody that, Jay-Z, the Scarface, you name them. Me and Sebo is bros to this day. But I remember at the time, nobody knew me. And nobody was checking on me either. You see what I'm saying? So if it wasn't for the c Lose and the Master P, to help catapult me into that center of attention. You see what I'm saying? That got that type of notoriety. So to still have that, I could walk anywhere to this day. In some places, it's like I lived on the street. Bleed, I ain't saw you in 20 years, right? But it's, you know what I mean? So that that greater impact, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, I have, have to get that a fact. Mm. So you feel like your presence on the album was strong? There's no no moments where you overshadowed. People got to know Young Bleed on that first album. Yeah. Okay, exactly. so Dimension Two is where we talk about the believability versus the suspension of disbelief. So basically, you know, sometimes rappers make concept albums where they go into a character and they expect you to go on a journey with them. Um, and, and sometimes yeah. rappers rappers are just saying, "Hey, this is who I am. This is my story." What what were you doing on this album? Was this this is who I am, or were you taking him into this young Lee Carleone character? Really, the truth about my life is not a character at all. I'm I was just with that record and every other record, giving you episodes and bits and pieces of my life. Um, bleed, you know. Um, for those who know and don't know, was really my granddaddy name. He's a World War II veteran, live street hood, and you know, hell of a man and a blues man. So. <clears throat> Before he passed, I told him as a child, between nine and 10 years old, that one day I wanted to be a rapper and I wanted a record company. And I grew exactly into that. So um, the Cardion part came from, I used to, my mother used to manage a piece of hut when I was a kid. When I grew up, I worked at that piece of hut and another piece of hut. So my, my older homeboys, they was managers, because um, one of the homies' daddy was the, the overall manager. So he would hire us straight out of high school and different things like that. Um, and what I used to do on my break time was make me a personal pan pizza, you know, catch the little live before I sit down and read my books. So one of my homies, um, Robert Butler, we call him Pap. I just saw him a few days ago, hadn't saw him in years. But he looked at me and said, you look like Don Carleon reading that mockery shit over that night. And started calling me that, you know what I mean? So I added the Carleon to Young Bleed and just wrapped up the whole essence, the family essence of granddaddy, last name so that character when i come back home and chat something to carlos tucker one of my big brothers off garfield street where we were born and raised um said we laugh at the world because you created this character by the name of young bleed you know what i mean versus my government and my nickname in the street um 
So that part of it, yeah, I, I give it that much, but everything is true life episodes and all but edited. A lot of shit I couldn't say I spit in the cold. And for those that know, peace, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, I remember coming out and uh, going gold and looking at the reviews and the source or whatever magazine, rap pages or whatever at the time. And that was rating me and Devin the dude out. And I know he had to be thinking the same thing I was thinking. They really don't know nothing about the South. Cause they, they was saying some of the shit sound make believe and myth. And it's not, you know what I mean? You gotta laugh to have a sense of humor with some of this shit to keep going through it. The South still the South was better than the boys in the sixties and all that other kind of shit. But we still in the struggle. So we talking about, we having a sense of humor and a sense of pride and a sense of reckoning. You know what I mean? If it wasn't this hip hop saved a lot of our lives, man. We shot, you know, we go back to God, Jamaica, then the Bronx, and then it trickled on down. So it's that evolution for people as a whole and let alone black folks that's different than everything else that's government structure, ABC, get up and go to work and be a part of robot factory. So God gave us heavenly riches. You know what I mean? In an infinite way. You know what I mean? So I take it like that. And all I do is try to translate the life I live by my observation of what's going on within myself and the world around me. I feel you. Yeah, and that, it, you know, we talked earlier about how, or we talked before in the first half about how you had the young wisdom to you, you know, the old soul. And so I picked up right away that these ain't fabricated yeah. stories. But I always like to create that clarity for the sake of the channel so people know all right is this an album where it's yeah. a character or not and so i kind of already yeah. know you and so on a scale from one to five how believable you think you were on this album um it should be a hundred plus percent you know <laughs> what i mean i can't speak for nothing less than that but speaking out my core and my inner self yeah you know it ain't, it ain't nothing for monetary games it's just being able to anywhere that lived in the country Rather that's by myself, with a female, whatever the case might be. A lot like Carlo Gambino, it, it that don't curb my appetite and my hunger for music. So I keep a, a, a personal home studio and I'm recording 10, 20 in, in the city on me. If I'm welcome, I'm coming through. You see what I'm saying? The business is right, so on and so forth. So that's my whole essence. I call a microphone a breath, a breath on, a breath analyzer, you know what I mean? Holy <laughs> shit, shit like that, I have to have that to breathe. That's been my therapy since a child. When there's nobody else to talk to, I tell everybody I pimp my pen and mac my microphone. I love yeah. that. All right, we're going to get into some technical stuff. You mentioned three, the delivery. Now, your delivery is, is some of the most one of a kind, and it might not be to you because you're uh -huh. from Louisiana where a lot of people talk how you talk, but on the, again, on the mainstream level, Hip hop had never heard somebody with your cadence before, the way you use your voice. And, you know, I'm I'm li I'm prone to agree uh, with, you know, what you said a lot of the other people in the game told you coming up, it was just the beginning. Because on your later albums, you definitely were projecting more, you were playing with, but on here, it was such a smooth delivery. And I, I yeah. read I read one thing that said you you started mumble rap, man. You, you ever heard that? <laughs> oh man, look, you. I was trying to let you finish. But I'm finna say they might want to call me the father of Mamba Rap. Actually, one of my nicknames by my step papa, man, um, and I used to get my ass whooped and get in trouble young, I mosey on off and you'll hear me mama man, I'm talking some shit under my shit. So my pop used to call me Mumbles all the time. That was his name for me, Mumbles. You see what I'm saying? So in a mob term, that's that's like a mob, you know what I mean? Fictional right. name, you know, with the Italians. So when you look at I say this here now, for where rap is now, when you listen to Cool G rap and uh, Eric Sherman was the first two rappers that rap with a list tongue. So yeah. me working on my pronunciation, enunciation, beyond so my pops can hear my clarity. You see what I'm saying? So you know how they say, say it with your chest. Yeah, yeah. I can get slapped in the head if you ain't looking me him in the eyes. And, you know what I mean? And yeah. speaking like a man. So I learned to project my voice but learn my undertone too from a, a guy like Rock Him. You know what I mean? He's my favorite rapper of all time because he taught me how to be myself and let that microphone and the speakers be my amplifier. 
LL was just one of the guards of rap, was one of my favorites. I'd love to see LL when he came to a concert in Baton Rouge. Looked like a guard on the stage. Well, it's Ron and the rest of the guys. And right now, but a lot like Mystical, I don't know if he ever had this experience, but he had that, that masculine, aggressive, line raw voice, you know what I mean? Over oh, with no music. So his voice was the music, you know what I mean? But after I watched Mystical get off stage, he'll talk like, hey man, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're stripping your vocal cords. Rod taught me how not to do that by listening. When you listen to California guys, when they come to the South, they sound white and proper to us. And some of the <laughs> New York guys, kind of raised outside of this Southern draw boundary. You see what I'm saying? Right. And so I just think it's about getting to that clarity. I got to get pronounced my shit as well as those guys to be heard. But now the shit didn't reverse. Now it's all this mumble, mumble, bumble, you know what I mean? And nothing against it. It's like it didn't went reverse. It's not about being educated no more. Some of your favorite rappers, I didn't know had been the cottage and all this kind of shit. But when they yeah. come to doing a rap rapper, they sound ignorant as a fucking exactly. frog. Yeah, all that well, fake yeah. 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 I, and and so, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I think mumble is a, is a lazy word that people would slap on what you did because you were one of the most clear rappers off the no limit camp you know uh at, the, at, yes, at that time and, and you, but it's like you rap from the corners yeah. of your mouth and i think there's a natural right. pearl in your words and and because of your rap style you also your delivery uh, i don't have the word for it i like to call it a pickup flow and then some of the members of the camp were doing it too yeah it's not a simple pattern or simple delivery where you're like, I get money in checks and I like to flex. Like you'd be like, you would say that sentence with a little bit of a giddy up to it. So you'd be like, I get money in checks and you know, I like to flex. Like, you know what I mean? You would pick it up and um, all that right. adds to pick how- it up instead of laid back. But you know, it's that laid back style of the South. You know what I mean? It's a little slower chopping screw. You know, if we could say that rest in peace to DJ screw. What I call it is that country boy swing, man. It got a country boy swing to it. You see what I'm saying? So it reflects, just like y'all reflect off the building, we reflect out of these cornfields and open pastures. You know what I mean? And that's the comfort. So yeah, it's a country boy swing. Slow walking, slow talking country boy. Yeah, there's a laid back, but you still got that swing. That's the perfect way to put it. I appreciate you uh, putting the words to it because yeah, it's, girl. It's what made everybody know when it's time for Young Bleeds verse. I don't care if it's six rappers on the song, you're nah. gonna be distinct because you rap from the corners of your mouth and because you do add that swing onto it. Uh, it just, and your projection was clear without you having to go up and decibel. You didn't have to shout to be clear. Uh, right. So what you give your delivery on a scale from one to five on that album? I'm here again a five, man. You know, once I fall into a pocket of a record, I'm not going to do that record unless I'm in that pocket. You see what I'm saying? So and to even manifest it, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned this word, so we're going to go right into it. You mentioned for the flow. Mm -hmm. Man, you got some of the most, again, uh, standout flow patterns of the 90s from Southern rap as yeah. far on the mainstream level because it took a lot of showing and proving for the south for a long time because the south knew but the other regions did not know what y'all could do and i know you mentioned in the first half that y'all wanted that y'all were going for that like yo we can rap we, we care about this we care about the words we put to paper it's not just a b c for you nah. you might you might hit them with an a b b b a yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. i know this how you do that there it's real unorthodox you'll have hella syllables in one sentence and then just two syllables in another and then you you put yeah. them together then you then you got playful with it and did the whole fly like an eagle see no evil yeah. but um yeah. the, when you when you were doing your catchphrases your catchphrases have a pickup to it too right you don't say those things slow so it's like full of that weed in the midst of a slow verse why right. um, and or do you you'll add the hot nigga say what in the <laughs> just that the yeah, cool. yeah. my favorite is how you did it on the end of the last album. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 man. And so, um, how would you describe your Bruce flow? Lee style? Bruce Lee style, man. I heard in the interview Bruce Lee say, "Man, be water, my friend. When you put water in the cup, the water becomes the cup. 
So all I do is develop myself to becoming another instrument and amplifying here again through that microphone. So if I hear a track, I'm listening for what's not in the track, what is missing. The translation of the track, which is the words and the pronunciation and the vocal tone, that, that it blends right in with the instrument. It ain't too high, it ain't too low. I try to stay a good in between. But that's all here again, being a good character and just being a part of a universal orchestra in that sense and just blowing my horn where my horn feeding, you know what I mean? And just riding the wave along the way. I hear the completion in my head. When I come in the studio, I don't like to have to wait for the beat. I don't like to have to wait for the, 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 the shit to be plugged up. I'm ready to work. And if it's that good, I'm in that good of a nature, I don't write it down. You know, I'm, I learned to freestyle by eight years old. I had to learn how to write. So I've been off the dome since a baby. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So if I'm in that good spirit, good nature, it's less like doing a live show. As a from a rapper's ear, rapper's mouth to a rapper's ear, you can always tell who's reading off paper and who's just flowing like fluid because yeah. they memorize it or they know where they're going. And yeah. so there's a, I think what you're describing me, there's a marriage that goes there, man. You chose what pocket in each track you wanted to mm -hmm. rhyme on. And you show different flows throughout the album. You don't right. rap. The way you rap on Ghost Rider is not the way you rap on uh, Keep It Real. Or, uh, or you nice. know, something like one of the, the the craziest flows is on better than the last time when you come in and you're like conjunction, conjunction. It's just yeah. so buttery how you came on that track. I try to be that bass player. You know, I got my high octaves and all that, but go back to drum and bass. And like I said, I'm a natural drummer. So if I know what to do with the snare and the bass, then I know what it's saying. You see what I'm saying? So I get right with that rhythm, rap in. Rhythm and poetry, R.A.P. And just here again, get in where you fit in and ride the wave, man. So being that butter, that's how I know it's my basic construction. You know what I mean? I'm from the rhyme construction. I wanted to construct in that sense and in that same way. I hear my drum first, so I hear a bass man. And then sometimes I hear my hats and I can build. So a lot of people that didn't watch me build, you have to look at some of my writings. They'll tell you this shit look like, um, hieroglyphics but sometimes the only other person that i heard um uh, say that say something like this um is rock kim and i didn't know this for years studying him you know without knowing the man and all that type of thing you know birds of a feather flock together great minds think alike but sometimes we build backwards you see what i'm saying if not the hook my last line i hear how i want i see the end of how i want this picture to end but now I gotta go backwards and build it to that point. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Sometimes that construction, sometimes my verse will hit me first, sometimes it's the hook. So in that sense, I um, I tell everybody this, I use a format called no guideline. I mean, it don't have to, every rap song don't have to be traditional 316, three verses. Right. If you come in off beat, rap before the beat drop, you know what I mean? Being a DJ producer, I don't think in just a one way path. So however a hit song to me is what hits you. If a beat hits you the same way we pull an old Jane Brown record out the crate and them drawings got you and that shit percolating, go with you. You move, man. Your first gotcha. thought, you know, nine times out of 10 is your first thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, I kind of already know your answer to yep. this, which is giving you the flow on one to five. Okay, yeah, man. Five, absolutely. Right. And that's gonna take us to the next dimension, man. No, dimension five, the wordplay. Uh, I yeah. got some lyrics, man. I wanted, I wanted to run by you. I actually, how would you describe your wordplay? Um, how could I describe it? Um, something you were saying the last time you asked me about, um, had me going in that direction. What I try not to do is trap myself in a box and in a style. When we talking the flip style and the three dimensional. What I do is on every record, <clears throat> you know, it's locking this muscle, stick my neck up and let you know I'm out here. I could do all that, but that's that's not my one style. I'm more like a master, master monk. The way I got the book, the manual, I know if not all the styles, the majority of them. So it's just like putting tapes of cartridges in something. You get you again, get in where you fit in and place it like that. But my wordplay. Um, 
it's based off of my flow and my inspiration. You see what I'm saying? It all depends on the song, you know, uh, what it's gonna call for. Sometimes, like you say, I have most syllables or alliteration and just one guy years ago, I forget who his word described to me, me. He say, hey man, you the type of rapper that got rhymes inside of rhyme. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not your average cat chase the rat and this is it's simple term. But then I do something simple, but somewhere along the line, it's like surfing. I'm gonna wanna get on this board and go and venture a little bit deep into the water and see if I can flip it and do all this. You see what I'm saying? So it's it, it's the um the ride the music take you on, man. I ain't gonna determine yeah, man. that word. You mentioned alliteration. I think I forget whether it was a pull it off or confetti where you said you be left perplexed, perpendicular, and paralyzed. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, using them P words. I learned a lot like that. You know, it's like then when we was kids and we had the little viewfinder shit, you know what I mean? You put on your ass, they got some new shit on the yeah, game yeah, now yeah. on the PlayStations and shit. But the viewfinder, like some binoculars, I'm trying to go far as I can do it and give you a detailed report, you know, as best as I can from my penmanship. Vocabulary words, my pops always told me, give me a double, triple education. My uncle used to tell me it's only three senses in the world. Uh, book sense, common sense, and street sense. Ooh. So in that same trilogy, I made that a part of my learning. So if I, the teacher was teaching us whatever Shakespeare would have, I went in class, I went, pulled on Langston Hughes' book out the library, whatever black, different things like that. And um, at the time I went to a predominantly white high school until they changed that. It was like 20% black when we first started and that changed. but. Um, we'll learn how back in the um, late 80s, early 90s. But, um, you know, with that in mind, yeah, as far as my structure, yeah, uh, and just my study load, I would get that book sent, the black book sent, you know what I mean? And learn different things that was different than the guys that was talking to me at home, home in the street hood and all that. Right. I learned them here again, gumbo pot, mixing all together. So, yeah, you said you're giving that a five for wordplay? Yeah, man. All right. Dimension six, and this is where I feel is is uh, where you are the strongest on this album. And this is the overall quotability. And we split this up either as punchlines or poetic wisdom. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you would consider yourself a punchline rapper. I feel like you got more of the poetic wisdom. What do you think? Poetic wisdom. <clears throat> yeah. I wanted to ask you uh, the science behind a couple lines. So this line right here off of the day they make me boss, when you start saying, niggas got me tripping off the shit they played in my head. Fatal visions of that infrared. Nigga crucified on the cross in the land of the lost and resurrected on the day they make me boss. So what did you mean when you said they got you tripping off the shit they played in your head, having fatal visions of that infrared? Um. <clears throat> Strictly Christism right there. That, that's one of the Christ lines that'll go over your head if you ain't deep, deeply spiritually rooted. What I'm describing is the same betrayal, you see what I'm saying, of your fellow man that lead to murder. They got me tripping off this shit they told me. And they played this shit in my head, a pox said they plant the seeds in my in my head, sparking sparking the flame. They plant, you know, it's such a dirty Game. So just saying it in a different way. We all saying the same shit. You mentioned that earlier. But saying that, now I'm going through the same trials and tribulation from what I'm taught about Christ and trying to live a Christ-like life. But you will try to walk a straight and narrow path. There's devils and demons and imps in the world. You have to accept that spiritual walk from the heavens down. That been going on since the heaven. Okay, so I'm teaspoon feeding that um, to the point of dying. If not all but a physical death, but it'll kill your spirit. It'll kill your drive and, and, um, and so on and so forth. So being resurrected is to come back to life or be born again in that same sense. You know what I'm saying? You might exhaust yourself throughout the week, even God resting on Sunday and be replenished. You know what I mean? Yeah, in the land of the law. And resurrected on the day they made me boss. The people called me back. I ain't said I was a boss but I'm chosen by something. You know, many call 
Yeah, if it was chosen, man, you see what I'm saying? That keep me in this. All this shit I'm telling you, I'm running through, how you survive. The whole question of how you do that there is, man, how do you survive when 165 in the city where the skin of niggas died, man? <laughs> yeah, you start with that, be murdered. Yeah, look at my city. So right now, Baton Rouge and everything, anybody paying attention to the statistics, it's one of the murder cowboys in the last 10, 20, if not 30 years. And no bragging rights in heaven. Ain't nothing good about that. You right. see what I'm saying? But imagine trying to be good in the midst of that. Still be loving, caring, dedicated to your family, and yeah. And yeah, and you know, thieves, there ain't no honor among thieves, man. So that part, that's, that's, that's describing that. Hey. In the Christ term, God say, see me in everything that make him boss to be resurrected. And at the right hand of God at the end of the day for all the shit and even murder that he went through. No weapon drawn, Chef Prosper. So, you know, I'll be saying some shit, man, when you get into it. I appreciate you I, breaking it down. Good looking, my man. Man, I knew I knew it was something heavy because you you get in, you sprinkle it. Like you said, you're not one of those beat you over the head, preach rappers. In one one impression that that it, that I never got on this album is that you revel in being the kingpin or the, the, the killer. You, you say, even on how you do that there, you say, you know, like, yeah, you keep it on you because young niggas still die, right? And then yeah. on, uh, on the day they make me boss, you said, you know, really, I ain't no murderer, <laughs> but you know, yeah. so you make those distinctions and then you get into your spiritual contemplation bag on on tracks like Ghost Rider and uh, time so hard where you like can you visualize perfection in the section eight it's just like you going in as the observer but as somebody that has seen some shit personally uh and, and because of that you you speak with a lot of words to live by that's how i define quotability mm -hmm. that's what you give a lot on this album so on a scale from one to five quotability what you're giving yourself you're goddamn right yeah one the greatest Hey, right. that's a five. All right, Dimension Seven. This is one of my favorite dimensions, man. The concepts. Now, um, another five, man. And uh, mentioning, I'm, I'm mentioning more the, the cover. So to sum it up, um, it was a lot of aims at doing an exorcist cover and just really going in as the priest and cleaning house and um, casting out bad spirits. So that's just what it is. That observer going, seeing the ruins and trying to rebuild and resurrect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wait, that's that's what the cover was represented? Um, the 2007 Once Upon a Time in America album. Oh, okay. but yeah, I had several aims. If you look at those two covers, I got the same black hat on. It's yeah. like the first cover, like going up and having this communion with God. Okay, right. everything else. By the second album, I'm, I'm, I'm in that mini match in the sky. I'm looking outside and, and I observed. I don't walk away from the Bible now because I'm one on one with the man. By the time you get to Once Upon a Time in America, I still got a back turn, but this time a briefcase. My father's business, family business. But now I gotta go do this street exorcism. It ain't like that. It ain't Lily White, and not a prejudice born in my body to say that. But in this same down track, the thief, of the thief in the night, you see what I'm saying? My whole life been this, to do this. So now I gotta do it in the form of rap music in that sense to where the kids can understand they'll sit there long enough. My pop used to say, man, if you did your homework like you listen to that fucking music, you'll be all right. But after a while, I learned to put on a rap tape and do my mathematics, man. You see what I'm saying? Music comes to every beats for peace of mind. But that's the whole thing. I'm teaspoon feeding, saying, okay, yeah, yeah, we all come from this. But for those that know, here again, peace and you know what I mean? They are for the saving souls. If I'm going to tell you something, I'm gonna, like Pimper say, I'm going to tell you something good. I ain't going to tell you nothing at all. And if you want to know how to do that there, follow me. Eat my flesh, flesh and my flesh. This is what I do for me. It worked for me. You're going to find your own way, but I'm going to learn something from you. You're going to learn from me. And add that to your good book. book. Throw away the bad shit, keep the good shit, and then you're going to have yourself. So that's my whole uh, method to the madness. That stuff you just said about the cover just blew my mind. But I think on, on all the albums, you got a concept song. I, if you ask me, I feel like concepts are kind of those defining moments that separates the rappers from the artists. It's like, oh, you taking us somewhere where you got to think a little more. You, you use an abstract 
reasoning or, or super creativity. So you got a song on this last album with, called All the King's Men, and you naming all these like famous king figures, yeah. right? And then uh, you just talked about the song that you're about to put out called No Music. That's conceptual. So on this album, you got uh, The Last Outlaw. Yeah. And throughout this whole song, man, you making nothing but sheriff and cowboy references. Yeah. To the, I mean, down to the point where you mentioned like uh, Bill Watts and wrestlers that played cowboys and stuff like that. Huckleberry and, and, and uh, Deputy Dog. I mean, you, was that a deliberate, you wanted to get that, you wanted to do that kind of playful, super MC type of thing on that song? Yeah. That's my favorite joint because of that. You hear how fruitful and soulful the music is. The, all the music, the bass lines and all that. At that time in hip hop, it had them grouped to that from Too Short to whoever. And you know what I mean? You came with, you know, all the, all the trunk music. So imagine Louisiana at the time, they used to call me an alien out here when I was a kid. You tell me, because you got to go to New York somewhere, man. Niggas ain't, you know, I was all but MC New York out here. You know, my cousin used to come to New York every year and record uh, Mr. Magic and Marley Marr, Red Alert and them tapes, put a TDK or Max Hill tape and just record y'all station and bring that back, you know, when I couldn't go, you know what I mean? I was too young, but they'll bring that. So I have what the South didn't have before they had, you see what I'm saying? Before the DJs had the record, I was already on the bridge, and all the battles, all that kind of shit. So that was my training at home. So the way I was battling guys down here, they wasn't, they still was, you know what I mean? Rapping, you know, 70s kind of rap and in between just really learning how to rap. And I had a little bit more advanced style based off their whole accord. So I learned to rap the beats and being a drummer here again. But that song is the closest, it's my favorite because it's one where I could come out and lyrical display. So what I did was, I'm not from New York, I can't rap New York. And y'all terminology, you know, some of the words, you know what I mean, go together. Some of the West Coast, but what was here again, the essence of the South. And Wild Wild West to the South, and you know, you learn about the Midwest and John Dillinger and them, when you look at your outlaws around the country, Bonnie and Clyde died down here. Then I, 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 I looked at our outlawism, you know what I mean, if I could say that as a word and just succumbed all the cowboy kind of terminology. We sat and actually watched that movie. And uh, I want to hear again a Louisiana country outlaw cowboy kind of sound. And uh, how the next day played that track for me. And it flipped me. Every I took my time apart and just went right at it. That was one of the easiest songs to write because that was dying inside of me to come out and he fed that appetite, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can tell. I can tell just from the way you flowed on it. It was one of the most fluid. You sound like you were in your bag. That's why you were into it. Hot niggas say what? And yeah, you were yeah. there riding hard, man. Right? In the town, you know, you can see you can envision that shit. Just having a good time, some shit jump off. You ready too? But you ain't ready. You looking for a pretty girl? Want to have a drink? Gamble a little bit? Do what you do in the outlaw town? But modern day outlaw for us in this damn time yeah man i saw the whole thing as as i listened to it that or you don't need a lot of concepts on the album all you need is one good one and i feel like you got the job done with that that's some old oh man he he going out the box but still fit with the rest of the album so uh what you get that on the scale from one to five yeah five absolutely and like i say here again you know i don't toot my own horn you know i don't take no credit for myself and Oh, glory be to God, but um, you can't imagine. You could think, man, I want this shit like this, but how can I bring it into fruition? So for the people that played the parts, it's just like a Dolomite move or anything else. Man, thank the characters that was on here along with myself. You see that? You ain't no star, not a star if you don't have a supporting cast. And so when it's my time to stick my neck out, I'm, you know, I'm gonna put on my young bleed hat. If I'm on somebody else's puppet, I'm going you know, I'm gonna catch the back seat, you know, play your part, play your role. So here again, I couldn't have guesstimated uh, how the music was gonna transpire, everything, you know what I mean? So when I listen to it, I go back and you know, it forever in my archives, of course, and listen to my records out of study. And definitely the people keep me on them. Uh, I spring new records out in shows and different things like that. And I might remember the rap and not remember I make so many records. 
But that one is embedded in me for life. You can put that on any given Sunday, any parking lot, in the, in, in, in the arena, wherever, and I got you. And I, I, I'm still performing that first album. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha. That's yeah, seven that's, of those. That's the show for me. You hear me? Twenty minutes, seven, seven verses, because you know everybody else is on the record. So right. that's one of the few that I do every now and again. Um, that that's just a bleed solo record off the record. But yeah, still to this day, I do them seven, do seven records off of that. The people satisfied. Right, right. man. That's because you shine on that joint. All right. Uh, the subject matter. So external content, dimension eight. Internal content, dimension nine. How much were you talking about? something topical so i think we talked about this in the first half time so hard uh is is obviously about ghetto life living in the hood and you got confetti and you can tell me if, I, if i'm right or wrong confetti is like a cautionary kind of rap right you talk people that's flexing too hard they're gonna get themselves hurt in the game yeah. other side of the game yeah exactly okay and then last but not least ghost rider uh, what is yeah. Ghost Rider about, man? Because that sounds like some spiritual internal warfare. You you said a line, you having thoughts of suicide and homicide while my brain collide, let it ride on my positive side. What's that song keep about? flipping, I'm watching five feeling negative vibe from set trip. Just that. It explains itself. I'm watching die feeling negative vibes from set trip. That same fight against good and evil. You see what I'm saying? The spiritual warfare. <clears throat> um, at that time in particular, I was going through some police shit. I was stumped bloody by the police. I was fighting the case that we kept out the tabloid and stuff like that. I went to jail for about a week's time. That was reduced, you know, from um, six months and I shouldn't have been there in the first place. But I had this thing going on with the police in my town actually trying to take my life and, you know, follow me a lot, a whole lot of shit out here. Um, at that time, um, I had a 65 all white Cadillac that my pops gave me drop top. Um, and um, I should drive that around the town. Everybody should say, man, you know, little nigga, big car, that's all right. You know what I mean? You're going to whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, um, but in that car, when I say the essence of 1965, I'm born in the seven. I could hear shit. I used to call the car Casper. I used to put people in that car with me and drive the car. It was my own personal Christine. And on the interstate, I take my right foot that I use for the accelerator and stick it on the dashboard and let you watch the accelerator man. I just keep driving. I'd have been to so much shit in that car and it was hard body. It was a two armor tank. But one night in the midst of making this album, um, I used to work at a construction site in the morning time, about seven in the morning, about four, four thirty in the afternoon, and worked the Pizza Hut at the night time. After Pizza Hut, I go to the studio and work on this rough get up, do it all over again the next day. So one night I was so exhausted, I was on my way to Pizza Hut. And I was in that car and uh, I fell asleep about five minutes before I got to Pizza Hut. I made it that far. And traffic was to my right. <clears throat> and it was a median to my left. And all the, all the directing could have went. It went to the left and bounced off that median and woke me up. And when I thought about it, I could have died in that car. I had so many family members, young and old, and died on this highway and just, you know, it, so on and so far. Made me think of the DOC boys left out. The form of a ghost rider. You know what I mean? Keep the ride on. So, you know, uh, is the definition of uh, that song, basically. Is it safe to say that song was kind of therapeutic for you? You needed to make that song. Yes, yeah, sir. Exactly. <clears throat> I said the same thing. Yeah, it came out that way. The one that took a little longer to write and when it came, that's how it came. I believe it. All right, so yeah, that's 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 the real topical songs and in between, I, I say the rest of the songs. It's a little bit of game. You didn't have any like, uh, no girl songs on there. You know, every rapper always feels compelled to have the one girl song. You didn't have that on here. Um, yeah, that's keeping it basic and keep it in the box. Like I say, I follow no guidelines. I'm gonna go where the music go, and if all this sound good for this long, I'm chopping it up next next episode. You know? Got you. So, what you give all of that on a scale from one to five? The, the subject matter, the content. Um, absolutely a five. Like I said, motion, um, uh, motion picture underwater, man. Motion picture on CD and tape back then, and all the way up into the uh, the modern day, YouTube, etc. So yeah, you still can play it back to back and you know, and, and take the trip. 
So yeah, I don't know where you're from the two two All right, so the final dimension we talking about dimension ten is storytelling. Now they used to say back in the day in the nineties, you ain't yeah. a good rapper if you ain't telling a good story. Uh do you feel like you got any stories on this album? Um now that's the one thing I say to myself sometimes. I don't do so much as that based on just catching the wave of, you know, I got different things that's maybe released and unreleased. But just that detail when you're talking Cinderella or Slick Rick, they're the greatest rap storyteller of all time. I don't have nothing in particular like that. The only thing that's kind of close to that is the last song law, where it sound like I'm not telling you the story. You riding in the you riding on the horse right behind me while we ride. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, or it's tick for tack and beginning to end is the only thing I would say that's kind of close to a story told song. Okay, so this sounds like this might not be a five for you. What you giving it on a scale from one to five? I give it a four based on that. Gotcha. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Slick Rick and you had mentioned Paul Revere earlier, man. You definitely are a super student of hip hop just because in, in your own verses, you slip little classic lines like when you did the whole you know, you ride, I can blow you away or you ride with me. That was from that Beastie Boy song where you said that. And I start to figure I'll do years if I pull this trigger from the uh, Slick Rick joint. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On that note, uh, it's been a, it's been an honor. It's been a privilege. It's been a pleasure. You done rocked out with me for two and a half hours. <laughs> Plus, oh, do the time for that, man. Who knows? Yeah, man, can you let the people know where to find you and what you got cooking up next? Oh, uh, yeah, man, Um, y'all get ready for um, Welcome to the Trap, Trap Do Entertain um, compilation, reintroduce the label, and uh, release the compilation finally. Um, And, you know, you, you can find the updates on trapdoent.com, um, as well as uh, me, myself, for Twitter people. I'm at, um, what is it, um, The Real Young Bleed, and on Instagram, it's at Real Young Bleed. So other than that, Google me, man. I'm out here, y'all. Y'all stay tuned. Um, and of course, you know, uh, Bangin' 832, man. Um, seven days a week. Me, myself, 6 p.m. Um, Central Time, 4 p.m. Pacific, and 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Tuesday and Thursday night. So y'all stay tuned. We out here. Y'all like me. Yeah, you heard that. And again, y'all can go on to rapruler.com and uh, leave your ratings for this album. And uh, yeah, y'all know what it is. F a rap critic. They talk about it while I live it. Words and mess.